Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A level further maths topics, and today we start the FP2 uh, part of um, the series, I guess. And today in particular, we are going to be looking at inequalities. So, the learning objective for today is to understand how multiplication can invalidate an inequality and how to prevent this happening. So, um, let's get into things. So over the years we've just tackled an inequality by pretending that the less than or greater than was an equals and solving it like an equation. However, inequalities are a very, very fragile part of mathematics and can be invalidated by uh, multiplication or indeed division. So think about the following inequality. So 10 is less than 14. Yeah, that's valid because 10 is less than 14 so yeah you can write 10 is less than 14 but let's multiply both sides by 5 and you get 50 is less than 70 this is still valid because 50 is less than 70 okay then let's multiply both sides by negative 3 negative 30 is less than negative 42 now then, that's invalid because negative 30 is greater than minus 42. Because if you think about a number line uh, thermometer, minus 42 is down here. Minus 30 is up here. So as you can see, minus 30 is definitely greater than minus 42. Um, so there you go. So that's invalid. So we now know that if we multiply by a negative uh, number, I should say number, uh, the inequality sign will turn the other way so it invalidates it but uh, basically if you times by a negative this is no longer a less than it becomes a greater than and that's just something you need to learn so here's an example then this is what we need to solve in FP2 and it'll probably become a little bit more clear now usually uh, if you were solving this you would just simply multiply through by x and be left with uh, x squared minus 2x is less than or equal to 8 and you know that's a perfectly valid move if that x is a positive but there's no possible way that we can know whether x is positive or negative because it can take any values so we we can't possibly know if it's a valid inequality so therefore we need to find a way to guarantee that the the quantity will be positive and therefore keep the the inequality valid if we multiply through by an x squared then we'll know that the quantity will always be positive because everything on this earth squares to be positive so it doesn't matter if it's minus 10 minus 150 or 273 if you square it it's going to be positive so we multiply by the square of the denominator and if there's two denominators we do we multiply through by the square of both denominators so here we go so let's multiply through by x squared and now we're left with x cubed minus 2x squared is less than or equal to 8x and then you just solve like any other inequality you take the the minus 8x over the other side and then you look for common ground between them I see an x in all of them so I take him out at the front and whatever's left is put in the brackets and that will usually factorize to leave you x x minus 4 x plus 2 is less than or equal to 0 so at this point uh, if you watch my FSMQ content then you'll know what I like to do here I like to draw myself a little graph and see where the graph is below zero because it wants to be less than so you draw yourself a little cubic curve going through negative 2 positive 4 and 0 and you end up with that and it's below the um, the axis at the, this point so backwards from minus 2 and between the values of 4 and 0 so how we write that is um, like this x is less than or equal to 2 or 0 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 4 so there you go job done that is how you solve an inequality with uh, an, an x on the bottom let's do another one then so this is the case where there's two denominators oops so <laughs> we have to multiply through by the square of both denominators so it'll be multiply through by x plus 4 squared times x minus 2 squared so doing that there you need to hold your nerve with your algebra here uh, if we're gonna multiply through by the square 
of this one, then on this side we'll only need one copy of the x plus 4, because we've already got one on the bottom. And we'll need two copies of the x minus 2, because I don't see that anywhere on the bottom over here. And then, greater than, on this side I already see a copy of the x minus 2, so I only need one copy here. But I'll need two copies of the x plus 4, because um, I don't see it anywhere on the denominator here. So you're left with that. And probably your first instinct would be to expand that, but just take everybody over the other side and make it a little bit easier for yourself, because now you can look for common ground between the two and take those common factors out at the front. So it'll be x plus 4, x minus 2 at the front, and then whatever's left you leave inside the bracket. So 2x plus 3, x minus 2, minus x, x plus 4. And remember, this is all greater than 0. Then you expand inside this, the square house, so you you've, you don't touch the, the 2 at the front, you've got x plus 4, x minus 2, and then expanding that and tidying up, you're left with x squared minus 5, x minus 6, which factorises, and you're left with that. And then, like you know I like the 2, uh, you draw yourself a little sketch and see where the graph is above 0, because it's telling you it wants to be above uh, the ground. So we draw an, a nice little quartic. It looks like a W when it's positive. It looks like an M when uh, it's a negative quartic. So uh, it goes through minus 4, 2, um, 6, and minus 1. And it's above the ground at this point here, from minus 4 backwards, and between the values of minus 1 and 2, and also from 6 onwards. So how we write that is by saying x is less than minus 4, or minus 1 is less than x, which is less than 2, or x is greater than 6. And that is that. So you, you've done both um, parts that you can be asked uh, at this stage with inequalities. And next lesson we'll be looking at more inequalities with mods. So hopefully you guys have found this helpful. Make sure that you leave a like down below if you did. Uh, any comments or questions or feedback, leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, but that is the first part of FP2. And it's it's a fairly reasonable part of it. Uh, I enjoy doing these. And, um, and yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed and hopefully you're having a great day. Uh, best of luck with your A-levels. And I'll see you later.